You see everything through your lens of perception. That is, your experience of the world is moderated, is siphoned, is uh, filtered through your lens of perception. And that this lens of perception comes through your life experience and also through the beliefs that you acquire over your life experience. So let's take a look at your lens of perception. Do you perceive yourself as successful? What do you think is success? How would you know if you were successful? And let's look at the areas that might be success for you. Success in, in money, success in love, and success in health. Those are kind of like the key blocks of life is love, feeling loved and nurtured and taken care of or taking care of others and being appreciated. And then there's finance, having enough to, to live comfortably, to create the difference in your life that you want, and also health. Sometimes health takes a back seat to almost everything because when we're young, we don't think much about it. And then we have been trained since very early, a lot of us, to not pay attention to our bodies, to learn to pop a pill so that we can just get on with whatever it is that we need. This is all about lens of perception. So having taken uh, an inventory of your success, where do you want more success in your life? What would you like more of and what would that look like? Then you have to ask yourself, what do you think when you think about your success? Having your success. Do you have discounting thoughts like it's not possible? or I'm unworthy, or that will never happen to me. Your thoughts have a huge impact on how successful you will be in whatever area. Oh, it's too much work. Oh, there aren't enough young guys or old guys or, or uh, available guys. Your thoughts have a huge impact on your success. Where do your thoughts come from? From my experience as a PhD psychosocial analyst, I have discovered and learned that most of our thoughts, beliefs, perceptions, and actions come from early childhood. From our experiences with our parents, with growing up, so for example, success. We learn a lot about success through our fathers. Okay, that sounds a little gender biased, but it's true. Certainly when I was growing up, it was hugely true. So how successful was your father? Did he model how to be successful? Did he hold you back by making you feel that if you were successful, somehow that would make him feel bad? then how did he treat you? Did he encourage you? Did he uh, lift you up? Did he inspire you to be successful? Did he believe in you? If he was hypercritical, if he saw you as not successful or, or never saw you as good enough, that would influence your capacity to see yourself as successful. And then how does he treat, how did he treat your mother? Was she devalued or was she uh, uplifted? And what did she do and what did she model in terms of femininity and success as well? These all have a huge influence on our success. And then of course, how do they interact with each other in terms of love? Was there love? Is love possible? Did your father leave you when you were young? Did, the, did their marriage break up? That is a huge impact on your belief and trust in men and the, the, the longevity of relationships. 
And then how did your father treat you in terms of your attractiveness? Did he respond to you? How did that make you feel about your um, attractiveness? And how did your mother treat you? Did she try and put you down because she was in competition with you? So these factors all impact us. And oftentimes they are subconscious. Oftentimes we don't even remember. We just know what we have and we don't have. So the good news is that you can change your lens of perception. You can recalibrate it, but it takes work. Now, one of the things that they are always teaching out there is tapping, that you tap to change your mind, your thoughts, your, 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 your limiting beliefs. I'm not saying tapping is bad, but it's only part of the process. It's a little like learning how to build a house by watching somebody, but never picking up a hammer. In order to really change, you need to take action. And it's when you take action that you discover what's really holding you back. Because first of all, you might try and take action and not even take action. That is, you procrastinate. You have a plan, but everything else gets in the way. You don't have enough time. Whoops, another day went by. Or oh, you weren't feeling like in the right mood. It wasn't a good time today. Oh, that phone call came through and I, I just afterwards, I was so upset I couldn't take that action. So the first question is, do you procrastinate? Do you take the action that you need to do to bring, at least try or attempt or practice to bring about success? But then there's another thing that we might do, which is sabotage. We might be calling the wrong people. This is a huge thing. For coaches and healers, are you trying to sell to the wrong people? The people who don't have any money, who have no motivation, who don't care about changing their lives, that have very small visions. Now, some of these people will actually come to you because they are in so much pain that they will do anything, but their vision is small. And if you are a change maker, if you want to make a difference in the world, you want clients who are like you that also want to make a difference in the world. So we talked about procrastination and sabotage. Maybe you're looking at the wrong clients or maybe you do things that actually sabotage you, like you miss your phone calls, or you miss your, you overbook, and then you're not prepared when you go to a speaking gig. Or maybe you, um, what else? Um, you get sick. You say, well, get sick. Uh, wait a minute, how, how is that sabotaging? Well, again, in my experience as a psychosocial analyst, oftentimes the, the illness is, it's the perfect excuse. And it could be either your illness or it could be your child's illness or it could be your husband's illness. When you realize that you are the creator of your life, that you are actually influencing the universe around you. You are manifesting all the time. You need to become conscious of your manifestation. Now, I particularly don't have that habit of getting sick because when I grew up, I didn't get a lot of attention for being sick. And I really feel sorry for people who did, even though it's once in a while, it is nice to get a little tender, loving care when you are sick but it can develop into a habit of sickness as being a way of getting attention and also a way of getting out of activities that are scary for you. So take a look at that. Do you get sick just before you're about to take a bold action? Or what other kinds of things do you do that get in your way? Watch out for those perfect 
justifiable excuses. You know, that last minute phone call in which, you know, a dear friend is having a catastrophe or a crisis. And of course, you have to step in and help them. And now the time to make that phone call, it's too late. Oh, tomorrow, it's too early. Oops, it's too late again. That's sabotage. In terms of health, so the other thing I do is psychosomatics, is to look at the underlying message. So everything is good. Everything you do is information. That's why you take action. Even if you sabotage, that's an opportunity for finding out what is holding you back what is preventing you from your success. But in order to understand what's going on, you may need a coach. You may need somebody who comes from a different perspective because as Albert Einstein said, you cannot solve the problem from the place in which it was created. You need outside perspective. And that's what a good coach provides you. So I bring also the perspective of psychosomatics. I believe that our bodies have a great resource of information to tell us what's going on with us. That everything that we experienced actually is, is written in our bodies. And so when we have pains and aches or, or health issues, there is information there. But you need a guide to learn how to, to listen and speak the language of your body. That's what I do. I had um, a client who had uh, issues with their uh, lungs. She actually had to have a lung transplant. And lungs have to do with breath, with life, with being able to have space. And we had to work on that, how she was creating space for herself. Because she had spent a lot of time being the people pleaser, taking care of her father and his needs. And then later on, him just really leaving her out of her, his will. She was really angry. And then she put all of her effort into her mother. And she didn't, she didn't take time and space for herself. And that's what that lung issue is. Uh, sometimes we have problems. Uh, oh, I have a client who has problems with digestion. And this, uh, it's in the lower belly. And that has to do with creativity. Well, she used to be an artist a long time ago. But she gave that up to promote her husband. But now her husband's gone. I see the universe as saying, mm, time to move forward. And the belly is saying, mm, time to move forward. But she is scared. And there is an underlying cause. And in order to move forward, she has to go into the history and the pattern and change the pattern and heal the old emotional wounds. I had another client who came to me and uh, so here's, here's a belief. She believed that uh, her parents put her in a boarding school because she was too feisty. And you can imagine that if you believed that you were punished for being too feisty, that might put a tamper on your ability to be creative, innovative, expressive. We worked together and she realized suddenly, oh my goodness, I think they actually put her in, I think they actually put her in the boarding school because she was smart and they were actually spending all that extra money to give her the best education they could. She just didn't work for her very well. But changing the story is also part of the healing process. But you don't change the story by tapping. You actually need to go back into the story and look at it in a different way. And you need to release the emotional energy around that story before you can change it. Otherwise, you're just kind of pushing. And I have also discovered that pushing doesn't work. 
actually pushing causes the muscles in your body to tense. And what you want is to relax, to flow, to be in sync with your vision and with your body and with your mind, to bring them all into balance, whether it's for uh, wealth or it's your health or love. You need to look into uh, the moment right now by taking action and find out what comes up. And then that becomes the key or the keyhole in which you can take the key and open the door. That's what I do. Would you like to know more? Let's have a conversation. There is a link in the comments to schedule a conversation with me, an introductory conversation. 15, 20 minutes to find out whether we're a match, whether the way in which I work matches with you. I'm only interested in working with people, with particularly women, who are a match, in which we resonate. Then magic happens. Then change happens quickly. And I am about quick change of empowering you so that you can have the success, the balance of success that you need in your life. So what is your lens of perception right now? Are you perceiving yourself as successful? Are you living your purpose? Or is it just enough? And is just enough good enough? And here's what I also say is if crisis happens, if health issues happen, if loss happens, it's the universe tapping you on the shoulders saying, mm, you may be off course and you may need to step higher to the next level of your journey. That's it for today. Come back tomorrow around the same time. I'm going to be trying to do this between one o'clock and two o'clock to share more. And let's see, I'm not sure what we're going to talk about tomorrow, but I'm sure it's going to be interesting. It's all about living your true purpose, living so that you die without regret. That's it for now. Have a great day. Bye.